The grace and the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with each one of you. I'm Father Mike Dandaran, the pastor at Holy Trinity Parish in Assumption, Ohio. And right behind me, the most significant event of your life takes place each day here and every weekend. We're about to journey for six weeks into fellowship, into getting deeper into the scripture of the upcoming Sunday, as well as studying and discussing parts of the holy sacrifice of the Mass so that each time we gather, we get more out of the Mass. I want to welcome back those parishioners of Holy Trinity who are gathering for the summer session of the Faith Sharing Groups. At the same time, I want to welcome any of the participants with the Lit Groups with Mass Impact. Last week, we talked about the experience of the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass is an experience of communion with each other. And our hospitality is such an important part of that. Today, we're gathering, though, to talk about something more practical, maybe. How do parents pray and parent during the Mass? Hi, we're the Daniels. Um, we've been parishioners at Holy Trinity since 2014 with a small break uh, in the last 16 months. We moved to Cleveland and moved back in December. Um, my wife, Jen, and I, we have five children. Joe is our oldest. He's seven. Uh, Maria is our daughter. She's six. Uh, James is four. Jo Luke is two. And John, our youngest, uh, turned one in March. And um, we get a chance to share with you a little bit about our experience with bringing young children to Mass. And Jen's going to talk about that. So I'm going to start with a little story. So we are both converts to the faith. And I entered the church um, soon after Joe was born. And so we were at Mass right before I was to join the church. And we were at the cathedral. Um, Bishop Thomas was saying Mass. And we were seated literally directly below um, the ambo, right at the right at the very front of the cathedral. And right in the middle of his homily, um, Joe looks up at Bishop Thomas and as loud as he possibly can goes. <laughs> and I thought, I mean, my whole my whole face turned bright red, I'm sure. And I thought I was going to die. So um, but I, the point of that is um, bringing kids to mass is always an adventure and you never, it's kind of like the proverbial box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get, but um, we're there. I think it's important to take them, um, to bring them to mass. Um, a few things that we do that sort of help um, that we've learned kind of over the years that sort of help us out. We try to sit um, as close to the front as we can to um, so that the kids can see what's going on. And they can, the better that they can see, we find the easier they um, can participate in the Mass. So we have found that we can expect more out of our kids than we think we can. So um, to expect them to sit when it's time to sit, to stand when it's time to stand, and to kneel when it's time to kneel, the ones who know the responses, to um, encourage them to say them along with um, the congregation. And then for the little ones, just to kind of echo those little whispers in their ear. Do you see Jesus? Um, those things to keep their attention. The other thing that's the most important is as parents, it's our job to um, let our kids know and, and introduce them to who Jesus Christ is. And what better way to do that than bringing them to the Mass? So um, regardless of how difficult it is sometimes and how um, stressful that it can be to get to Mass and get seated and, and get everyone there and, and to the bathroom and back and ready to go, um, the most important thing we can do as parents is bring our family um, and introduce our kids to um, Jesus and, and at the Mass. Um, and know that we're struggling with you and we're happy to do it. Um, thanks. It was a non-negotiable in the Dan Duran household. Non-negotiable. You're going to Mass on Sunday. Every Sunday. Doesn't matter if you're traveling, doesn't matter if you're mildly sick, you're going to church. For mom and dad, it was the third commandment. Keep holy, the Sabbath. And raised in the tradition they were, they understood how important it was to get us to Mass every Sunday. I do wonder, though, how holy of an experience it was for them 
as they try to keep control of the six of us in the second pew on the left-hand side at St. Mary's Church there in Tiffin, Ohio. We weren't always the most cooperative and most enthused kids at the Mass. Maybe it wasn't always the most holy experience, but it was still the most important experience that mom and dad could give to us children, the importance of that weekly celebration of the Mass. Parents might be asking yourselves, what can we do to better prepare our family for this important moment of the week? There's so many best practices out there. Just like an athlete preparing for a game, the preparation occurs long before they arrive on the field. What can you do at home to get the kids focused on what's about to happen at church? Speak to them in that language that they connect with. That we're going to Mass today to encounter, to experience something powerful and real, to experience Jesus. Speak to them about the significance of this moment, that, that what happened 2,000 year, years ago at Calvary, well, it's almost like we do time travel. You find the language, the illustrations that work for your children, but prepare them ahead of time. Take the time. It's good for you as adults, but also for your children. Read the gospel together. You know, If nothing else, read the gospel as you're driving here to, to church. Try to quiet them down enough to say, hey, listen, kids, we're going to hear this gospel today. Allow that to be a moment of preparation. You know, as a priest up there at the altar, I got a pretty good perspective on a lot of things that happened in this church during the Mass. I find it rather humorous. And I know and I see parents at times meeting the challenge of bringing their kids to Mass and trying to keep it holy. And I've seen those embarrassing moments you know, the embarrassing moments where you got the runaway kid making a headway for the altar and the parent trying to sneak out of the pew so nobody sees him, but everyone sees him anyways, trying to capture that, the little rascal as he makes his way to the altar. Now oh, we've seen the, the other one of the parent taking the, the honorary child, disobedient child down the center aisle trying to get out of the church as the child's having a meltdown saying, Daddy, don't hit me. I've seen the examples of the, the child who is just simply unruly throughout the Mass, and the parent trying so hard to make a go of it. Every time I see those moments, my prayer is a prayer of gratitude that the parents have made a commitment to exposing to their children the most important thing we do every week. i got to remind you that by getting your kids here every week, it's a teaching moment. You know, you're teaching the kids what it is to pray, how to pray the Mass. I, I do have to say, I look out and I see families who move their way through raising their children. And, and a great example, I remember being so impressed in my first year here of a family with two children. And they had just been able to teach their children, their two oldest, how to pray the Mass with reverence and devotion and attention. Well, the third one came along. It was pretty good for the first two years. But when that child hit the terrible twos, holy moly, every time they came to Mass, that child seemed to have a meltdown. And yet persistently, mom and dad attended to the moment as they should. And you know what? That child grew out of the terrible twos and began standing alongside her siblings in a reverent, devout, beautiful way. A couple years later, baby number four comes around and, yep, they hit the terrible twos and a repeat scenario. And I know in those meltdown moments, those embarrassing moments, how quickly the parent wants to take the child from the church or even try to skip the church. Nah, engage them in the church. Teach them. It's a teachable moment. The other thing to remember, parents, is look, you know, just like your home, at times the celebration of the Mass can be a little messy. And that's okay. It's not going to be messy in heaven. But here on earth, Mass at times is a little messy. And if the family experience is a little messy, don't sweat it. And recognize that it's simply a season of life. Your season right now is the vocation of being a mother or a father and raising your child in the faith. So come to church with an expectation and a realization of the season you're in. 
If you're coming to Mass thinking, I'm going to dive in, and I'm going to be 100% in the zone, listening to every word of the Scripture, dwelling deeply and meditating on the homily, and in the zone throughout the Eucharistic prayer without distraction, I think you might be disappointed. Now, there may be a season in life where the children are grown, and you have the chance to come to daily Mass and stay in the zone. But that's not the season right now. And you know what? Holiness can happen in every season of life. Yeah, in the messiness of the meltdown. And as your diligence and your patience with your child, that's a moment of growing in holiness. Don't pass it up. One of the great hallmarks I feel I hear at Holy Trinity is, it's a beautiful thing to see so many families gather together. And I'm encouraged because, yeah, we have those parishioners with kids have meltdowns, but so often I'll look out and I'll see another parishioner taking care of somebody else's child. They're holding the one as the parent tends to the other. You know, that sense that, hey, we're all in this together, and that there's no judgment if a child acts up. There's simply rather an effort to show care. So that's what it's about. Let the meltdown happen. Manage it to the best of your ability, but don't sweat it. Parishioners who have no children, when it gets messy, don't sweat it. Because remember, without those crying babies, without those voices, we wonder where the future of our parish would be. Rather, when you hear all that, you know, offer a smile. Offer that gentle look of, hey, I was there once. I get it. I understand. Don't snarl. Smile. Offer a hand. Be that support to them. As you gather in your small groups, talk about your experiences of what it is to try to pray and parent the Mass. I bet some of you have some best practices that are out there. Share them with each other. Talk about how can we make our parishes more family-friendly. If they're not family-friendly, if they're not welcoming the messiness of family life, there's not a future. All of our parishes have to have a sense of hospitality, warmth, and welcome, particularly to families with children. I look forward to gathering with you next week as we continue to delve more deeply into the meaning of the Mass and making it come alive for us. Until then, I'll see you in church.